Let's see if we can do it. The intercession week starts tomorrow. Where did the idea of intercession come from? The idea of the intercession came from a group of teachers using funding from the Department of Education. It was a planning grant that we were awarded and a big part of our conversation was what do we need to do to help make our students become more successful. So out of that conversation came the idea of the weeks of remediation and the weeks of intercession. And, uh, and that group of teachers did a lot of work and had a lot of discussion about that and then we took those ideas to the community and to the administrators and it just grew from there. How is the balance time to schedule you helping students who are behind in their learning? Well, those students are getting um, two extra weeks during the school year in addition to the three weeks of summer school that's focused uh, on their needs. And I think we have gone one step beyond with this concept in that um, these students are not just in a classroom labeled remediation. These students have all had benchmark tests. They've had their scores from their SOL test and from Stanford 10 tests have all been analyzed and they their skills, their specific skills that they need to be successful in school have been identified. In other words, you might have a student who's really very good at math, but still has some issues with multiplying. You know, they may still need to use her fingers to, to multiply. Uh, and so that student may be in remediation and may be learning how to multiply. So, you know, every student's specific need we hope is being met and the purpose is not so much to prepare them for standardized tests, but to prepare them for their next step in education, be it college or, or wherever they are, and, and um, so they'll be a better student and a better citizen. So what did Gay like to do to plan for our year-round school calendar? Okay, well we started with the committee last year and we made sure that we had teachers from all three schools so that as we were researching and deciding what to do, we knew that all three schools would have a voice because all three schools are very different. Um, we had about seven or eight members on the committee, including Mrs. Cardwell, she was our leader. So starting last year, early in the fall, we started doing some research and talking to other school systems who did a balanced schedule we went to some school visits and met with some um, principals and some teachers who were doing a calendar that had the intercession included in their schedule. Um, then we started having meetings with some of the faculty at the different schools and some of the parents to get their ideas, um, what they felt would work, what they felt wouldn't work. We came up with two calendars. One was a four-day week calendar where the intercession would be on the Mondays. So students would do remediation and enrichment every Monday or two Mondays a month and the other two Mondays would be teacher work days. And then the other calendar was the intercession schedule that we're doing right now with the two intercession weeks, one in each semester. And after talking to faculty and parents and community members, um, we decided that it would be best to do the calendar that we're doing now with the intercession during the fall and the intercession during the spring. Can you tell us a little bit what you do in this coordinate position? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you know, so far, it's been primarily enrichment uh, work, and it's been a lot of a lot of uh, collaborating between our outside uh, affiliates and the school itself, setting up things from field trips to uh, do we have bag lunches for kids on field trips? Do we have a number count for kids going to the rec center for swimming? Communicating with Blue Ridge Discovery, Chestnut Creek School of the Arts. So it's been a lot of communication, um, just wearing a lot of different hats as far as emails, uh, phone calls, sending out flyers for the kids, um, worked with GMS administration about scheduling the kids per uh, each class, uh, getting those brochures out in a timely manner and getting them back so that we could try to make sure that every student uh, did get their first or second choice, which we were able to do. And, um, and then also working with the school board office, uh, particularly Ms. Cardwell, about 
resources needed for the enrichment classes. Well, for your your job go in whenever the enrichment needs. That's correct. Um, you know, also besides doing the enrichment for the middle school, I'll be doing uh, data coordinating for elementary and middle. And uh, particularly this spring's focus was on math. And um, we want to be able to show that our students are doing more than just having fun here um, during Enrichment Week and Remediation Week. We're actually going to look at some skill-specific data to, uh, to see the improvements made by our students. Uh, right now, the math teachers were uh, given the assignment to um, distribute a pre-assessment, if you will, for each student. And um, it didn't have to necessarily be aligned to SOLs. It was going to be aligned more for what that kid needs to be successful in math. And we're going to do pre-assessments and post-assessments, just short, you know, 10, 15-minute assessments. And what we're going to do is compile the data in the weeks following uh, remediation week to show what kind of improvement that these students were able to make um, as far as their math skills. Ultimately, we know that it will help them in the classroom and later on in testing, but really the, the drive is more what do these students need to be successful in math. How is the balanced calendar schedule helping students to do better in school? I think it's really challenging some of our kids who are already ahead by having all the enrichment sessions and um, I know I've heard lots of times in the hallway the kids are so excited about coming and um, I heard this morning I get to learn about science today so I think it's really um, pushing forward our kids who are doing well and like I said earlier helping with the struggling kids with getting some one-on-one -on -one attention with the teachers. So. so what's your favorite part about the enrichment or the intercession? Um, I'm helping with a remediation group in the morning and I really like working with those fourth graders but probably my favorite part is when I get to walk around and see all the kids and what they're learning and um, all the different sessions and science experiments and um, digging for dinosaurs and just all the neat things that the teachers have come up with for the kids to work with. Well thank you for meeting with us today Thank you, and talking to me about the enrichment stuff. So. Okay. so what's your favorite part about intercession or the enrichment? One, we're giving students that need extra support academically. We're giving those students uh, an opportunity to move forward in, in small groups. And, and then the enrichment piece, we're giving students an opportunity to explore and try things, again, like this experience that otherwise you and, and the other students in here might not have an opportunity and it may steer one of you who knows we may see one of you you on tv in uh, 15 years or something or 10 years so really just opportunity and that's i think what we try to do at gay wax is just provide opportunity so maybe that's if the, the single uh answer to that would just be to provide provide opportunity so what factors went into the decision that you made to recommend the balanced calendar to the school board? And that's obviously a, uh, would be a detailed answer. We had, you know, committees that spent, uh, you know, over a year looking at, again, as I mentioned earlier, balanced calendars and extended year calendars. We had uh, public meetings. We had meetings with, uh, maybe our first meeting was with stakeholders in the community. Uh, with folks from the Rec Center and the Chestnut School of the Arts and Blue Ridge Discovery and, and smaller groups of folks and, and just started talking about how this would impact our community. Uh, then we had uh, two or three meetings, open meetings for parents to help the parents understand again how this impacts uh, each family individually, how it impacts their schedule. Uh, so it was taking the input from uh, community members, from staff members. We had many conversations with all of our staff's uh, elementary, middle, and high school student, or teachers. So really just taking all of the input that we could get from stakeholders, from parents, from teachers, uh, from community members, and looking at data of what is working in America right now in schools, and kind of just putting all that together and then just uh, kind of a leap of faith that uh, we're going to go with it and, and it's going to work and that's where we are now. So we think it's working. Okay, well thank you for meeting with me today and talking to me about this enrichment. Thank you very much. Cut! So what's your favorite part of the intercession or the enrichment? Um, I have to say you know the enrichment is the enrichment is fun for everyone and the enrichment is is fun for people to participate in and the teachers have really done an outstanding job of planning these things and i think they enjoy doing something different so from that perspective 
the enrichment piece has been has been good to see. Uh, it's it's good to see the student excitement. It's good to see the teacher excitement. But I have to say, my heart is in the remediation piece because um, that I guess was my main purpose or goal in this calendar and with this committee is to get it um, at the base of of what some students need to really be successful. And I feel like that these, this remediation time is, is answering that need. So I think that's my favorite part. Well, thank you for meeting with us today and talking about the enrichment. Well, thank you for inviting me.